Hi, this is Lexi Nieto, voice of Tomo Aizawa from Tomo-chan is a Girl, and you're listening to Podcast Across Worlds, Hawaii's number one anime podcast. Welcome to Podcasts Across Worlds, where we like to read a lot of manga, watch a lot of anime, and talk about it for hours. I'm your host, Lahila Superfina. And I'm your co-host, Mikhail Casanova. And today's episode, we have the most iconic guest in voice acting, Dorothy Bond. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! <laughs> So we're going to list the character she's been most recently. So we have Teacher from Master Detective Archive, Rain Code, Emma from Vinland Saga Season 2, Mercedes from Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, Woo-hoo. Little Aurora from Tiger Bunny 2, I love that Minori, <laughs> Minori <laughs> from Tokyo 24th Ward, and from Comey Can't Communicate, one of the most popular Netflix shows, she was Mikuni and Shuko. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so how have you been in this year? Because we're going to start recently because 2023 and yeah. we know that you have years. You have been many, many characters. In mm-hmm. probably many people's lives. So how has 2023 been treating you? Well, I mean, it's it's been like a double-edged sword. We uh, have, me and my husband, Tom Fond, who plays Agumon in Digimon. I don't know if you know that. Um, he's also the Giver in The Giver. Um, <laughs> we've been married for like 100,000 years. And um, this year, we finally got a representation for conventions. We had never had that before so this year we went to more conventions than we'd ever been to it's like oh my god wow this is a whole new world we'd usually go like maybe one or two a year this year it's been like a lot for us so that has like totally changed just by having someone to to manage it because yeah cow. yeah it's it's crazy so so we're doing conventions now <laughs> What, it's, what, how do you guys decide to get rep- in a representative? Um, that's a change. Yeah. Well, okay. So, um, Joshua Seth played Ty in Digimon and mm-hmm. Ty and Agumon were, were together. They were a team. So we ended up doing, I think, I think it was because we did a convention that, that he was at and we were all together like, Ooh, meet the Digimon people. And <laughs> And he said, oh, you know, you should have my guy represent you and we can do conventions together more often. So that got him in. And then we did a signing out in Simi Valley where it was like a dozen Digimon voice actors that got together. And there was a guy there who was representing a bunch of those people. And he said, hey, you know, here's my card. Let's see if we can work together. And we're like, yeah, that'd be totally great. Um, Mm -hmm. And I had I, I actually had I had a manager. I will say this for several years before, but really didn't get a lot. You know, I think I may, maybe got two things from them, mm-hmm. but they have a roster that's like, you know, everyone in town. But uh, but then but then they got us a couple of things too. So boom, boom, boom. All of a sudden, all this stuff started happening. Woo, yay. <laughs> 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 because it's really fun, uh, not just because we get to meet the fans and do all that stuff, but we get to see each other. You know, as a voice actor for anime and games, you are alone. You're in the booth by yourself recording everything. And uh, mm. so you, you never get to see your your fellow voice actors. But if you go to conventions, it's like, oh, my God, hey, you know, let's go out to lunch. Woo. It's really fun. We get to actually socialize. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So you guys are able to bounce off each other, too, while you're, like, on panels and such. And- oh, yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> what yeah. is your favorite experience so far then at these conventions? Ah, uh, God, what a question. Um, <laughs> okay, I can't remember one specific thing, but I will say this. Me and Tom put together 
a panel that we do at um at like usually three day conventions they'll give you like an hour to do a panel one day or even two days and we have one that's like advice for aspiring voice actors and we talk about the whole process and you know how we got into it which is totally different than how you get into it nowadays and you know what it takes and it's very competitive and then for like the last half an hour 20 minutes half an hour uh we have p volunteers come up if you want to you know be directed we have we have sides from anime or video games and we'll like work with them and you know do the little thing we'll give them a little um autographed whatever as a as a as a mm. lovely parting gift um <laughs> <laughs> and it's really really fun i really like that <laughs> So what was it like as a voice actor getting into the business? Here is the thing. We got started in like the 90s, the early 90s. And uh, there was nothing. Literally, it was like the wild, wild west. There were tumbleweeds blowing by. There was nothing. Um, we were actors. We were stage actors. We went to college. We got our degree in theater. I was doing, you know, traveling shows and Tom was getting on camera stuff and blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly people that we knew, a couple of people we knew came up and said, hey, I got this, this cartoon from Japan um, and the producers want to, you know, make it into English. You're an actor, you know, your wife's an actor, your brother, whoever. You want to be part of this? You want to, do you think you could do that? And we're like, yeah, sure, let's do it. You're thinking it's just like one little thing that's going to happen. Um, so we went in and we worked on like some of the very first ones like you know macross and power rangers and orgus all these you know really really oldies um and suddenly you know we started getting more and more and it just the ball was rolling and suddenly that was all we were doing mm -hmm. you know i didn't have time anymore to like go do a tour of a musical or whatever i i know i i'm i gotta do this so it like dropped into our lap <laughs> it wasn't something <laughs> that we pursued. It wasn't something people even thought to pursue back then because it didn't exist. They called it mm -hmm. the animation. It wasn't even called. I animation. remember that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so, so that was it. That's how we got into it. Mm hmm. And then what was it like seeing this industry grow? Like you were literally the starting point and you just, it's like, I want to say, was it like seeing a baby growing and you just seen it become an adult and just becoming some other thing because it evolved because yeah. dang, this industry is huge right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's ginormously huge. It went from a, a little tiny puddle to like the ocean. It's now the ocean it's everywhere. This tiny little niche thing is now, it's everywhere. Everybody, well, not everybody, but old, most people know what anime is now. You know, I mean, it's mm -hmm. on television all the time. Uh, yeah. There was nothing when we started. There was no Toonami. There was no Crunchyroll. There was nothing. Um, but yeah, yeah, it started from nothing. And now it's huge, which um, makes me really grateful that we're still even involved in any way. Because the talent pool now is like in the mega millions. You know, so for mm -hmm. us to even get work anymore, it's like, thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would have, you had to sort of kind of branch out, not just be voice actors. You did other things within the industry. What were they specifically? Well, I don't know. I mean, I did games also. Voice, voice, I mean, voicing in video games is, uh, harder than voicing an anime only because of the the time involved usually a, an anime session is like two hours that's mm -hmm. you know the the average anime session average voiceover session is four hours so mm -hmm. you have to really you know take care of your instrument um and some of us since we started everything uh learned the hard way really learned the hard way and how to protect it oh my god i'm losing my voice <laughs> yeah yeah so but uh i mean i know a lot of people uh got into also like audiobooks um mm -hmm. i've done the occasional commercial i don't do audiobooks i can't do them i don't have the patience for that i can't sit in my tiny hot excruciating booth for that long i can't do it i'm just no 
Mm -mm. I mean, it's probably a very <laughs> lucrative career to do audiobooks. I can't do it. <laughs> I know my limits. <laughs> <laughs> and so, since you've done many characters, what's so far your favorite type of character to voice? Um, okay. I do, I do a lot of moms. I do a lot of moms. Uh, mm -hmm. I do a lot of teachers, many, many teachers along the way. Uh, I do, I do love doing the moms. Uh, I was doing moms before I had a kid, you know, I was, <laughs> like a thousand years ago, I was playing moms just because that's my voice type. You know, you go, you go in and I sound like this. And other people go in and they sound like this, you know, and, and other people go in and they sound like this. So they immediately hear you and they go, oh, she's going to be the mom. Or you're going to be evil and you're going to be the kid. Um, but, you know, eventually you you stretch your wings and you get to play other parts, too. But that's what I usually get cast as. Um, and I do like that. I like that. Everyone says, oh, I love playing villains. That's my favorite thing to do. And yeah, it's, you know, it's fun for a little bit, but I, I like playing the good guys. <laughs> that's just me <laughs> why do you like to play as a good guy is it because that's just natural for you or is it because you like the dialogue you like your role in the story like is there anything specific or it's just what you like, it's like yeah no, no I like I like being the, the caring and supportive you know, in a chaotic, unsupportive world, I guess. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? There's mm -hmm. so much like mm -hmm. negativity that I, I want to be the, the positivity, right? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, if I'm playing the teacher and someone didn't turn their homework in, then I'm not going to be super positive, but usually I am. <laughs> <laughs> and then do you have a favorite mom character then that, you always remember like you're like oh i wish i could voice that character again oh i hope i get a mom that's just like her again is there anyone specific uh you know i um i enjoyed playing ty's mom because she was a terrible cook um <laughs> it, 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 there, there were dialogues where i was like ty i made liver shakes i mean crap like that she just made the worst 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 <laughs> So that was really fun. <laughs> Very memorable because of that. Um, I I played Asuna's mom in Sword Art Online. And that, let me just say, there are roles that are challenging. That was a challenging role because she was a biatch mom. She was not my favorite mom. And I, <laughs> me and the director had to work a way to create a reason for her being like that that was a challenging mom not my favorite mom uh i think shuko <laughs> shuko komi may be one of my all-time favorite moms in komi can't communicate because she was so quirky forever 17. <laughs> <laughs> i like her <laughs> <For real. laughs> yeah. awesome those mom that's actually interesting what mm -hmm. was the story you put behind her to yeah the reason well, for how she was yeah i i think it's because she she has her own like um she she didn't achieve what she wanted in life or whatever so she's putting everything on her daughter i need you to achieve mm. this you're not you're not achieving this you're not doing the right thing you're i'm uh, i'm so you know what i mean it was like it was mm -hmm. really all about her more than it was about her daughter so that was that was like a whole psychological thing that was going on, you know, which is great. I mean, <laughs> characters like that. The one thing I will say though is she had um, a moment of clarity when she went into Asuna's world, and that was like phew, I got to totally have a sea change there, man. It was it was really great. Her whole attitude Aww. changed. It was neat. <laughs> oh, that whole transformation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see i leave the sword art online stuff to her so i just reviewed one of the games that just came out uh -huh. and i'm sitting next to her i was like what's going on what's going on like, i don't know anything about sao and it's <laughs> like i enjoyed the first season to a point and then like certain like okay so i get this thing when i watch anime like mm -hmm. 
okay like being a teenager for me i'm so far removed from it so like when i see teenage characters acting like grown adults there's a point for me where i struggle like suspending my disbelief yeah and she, she's like but you watch wrestling i'm like yes i know i, I, I suspend my disbelief on that but it, it's like i got to a point when they're like oh you know we're married this is our, our kid and i'm like you're 16 years old what are you talking about <laughs> so i i wrote it off and she's like just get past that part so as i'm <laughs> reviewing the game i'm trying to work past that i'm like oh this is this is really good but I'm still salty about that one part. I'm like, I, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't. It's, it's, and I, I wish there was like more. And I noticed that we're getting more anime that is like having more grown adults as mm. opposed to like teenagers. And I'm like, okay, there's a point as I'm getting older where I'm like, I'm starting to not be able to relate to these characters as much because I'm like, there's no way you're 16, 15, 14 years old and you're like dealing. I'm like, I'm 35. Come on now. I'm still figuring things out. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. We're right, always figuring wanna, things out. I just want to explain what that part that he's so hung up on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so in the story, Sarah Online, Kirito and Asuna, they're trapped in the game. They have no idea when they're going to get out. So they're trying to live out their lives as they're, much as they can. They're 16 years old. And so they decide to be life partners. You know, they want to get married. They're like, okay, you're my husband. You're my wife. And then they encounter this fairy-like child uh -huh. who then calls them mom and dad. Uh -huh. Maybe it was just the translation, but she said she calls them like mom. No, 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 no. I read the I read the manga too. <laughs> no, I read the manga. I'm sorry. You remember being 16? <laughs> I didn't know. I thought I knew everything. I knew nothing at 16. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nobody knows anything at 16. You just don't. <laughs> you don't. No, you don't. Well, anyway, so they decide to adopt her as their child. They are immersing themselves in this life that they thought was just going to be it. Like, you know, we might as well try to live out as parents. I mean, we won't be able to because we can't age. We can't procreate, you know? Like, they're, they're virtual. They're 16 years old, y'all. <laughs> just, just keep that in mind, y'all. <laughs> He's hung up on. <laughs> just I mean, there are things you just can't get past sometimes, no, no. matter how hard you try. <laughs> and so I told him, like, just move past that part. The rest of the story is good. <laughs> but no, he couldn't. He just couldn't. And then while he was reviewing the game, that same fairy came up and would call them Mama and Papa. <laughs> No. And it triggered him. I was like, control like, it yeah. down. I'm good. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And it triggered him. Oh, I forgot to say one thing about one of the moms that I play. I play uh, oh. Keith Tomato in Demon Slayer, who's the mom. I was so happy oh. when I got when I got cast in that role. And I go to my first session. And I don't know if you know Demon Slayer. Yes. But, but mom... Um, does not survive past the first episode. And I'm like, great. Right. I'm in this great show for one episode. But uh, <laughs> luckily, luckily though, she comes back to her daughter, Nesuko in like dreams. Mm -hmm. So I actually did get to like be in it more and in Mugen Train the movie. But uh, when, I, when I was in the first episode, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Come on. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> Oh, you know, um, God, who said this? A friend of ours said this. Why in the movies do the moms die? Why don't the mother-in-laws die? <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, because the mother-in-laws who oh survive are always, like, the villains. And it's like, it's not fair. Well, Why do yeah. they get to survive? <laughs> yeah. Stepmom, he, stepmom's like, she's really, really mean. My mom was, like, really, really beautiful. Come on, I'm Cinderella. Let me have my mom. <laughs> oh my gosh, that just reminded me of Rick at Ralph, where the princesses say, like, did you did you lose your mom? Do you have a mom? I'm like, no, I don't have a mom. No, neither do I. Neither do I. If I wish, it's like, you know, let's, how do we <laughs> trauma bond? It's exactly that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's that like was the so mother's. Good. The mother's death was the sacrifice to let this child grow <laughs> as their own being. I, guess. I mean, yeah. Sure. How 
we'll go with that. Yeah. Let's go with that. <laughs> it, it's so it's so crazy, like the amount of our friends that are like voice acting in Demon Slayer and just like I remember when it first came out mm -hmm. before it ever got popular. No, it's just so many shows and, and manga that we're into that were like that, like before it caught on. Even my hero academia, yes. Attack on Titan. I remember when those came out and people weren't talking about them and then i'm like hey yo did you, did you watch this did, it's super good yeah whatever I'll, I'll get around to it and then now it's like bro have you seen this did you read that did you watch that episode i'm like i was telling you about that yeah and you're like Years yeah ago. i did <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's the the other thing is super cool that i'm seeing like within voice acting like with a lot of our friends that started out like uh case in point griffin burn and and um um mark whitten and others like we knew them before they blew up to where they are now mm -hmm. and it's so surreal like i was talking uh to mark cause he's getting married next year and i was like bro you've been going non-stop since fire emblem three houses he's like yeah he says it's crazy because i he, i think he does the theater as well he does podcasting he's like yeah what? i don't have time for anything now <laughs> Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm at conventions all the time. I'm booking shows and doing games. He's like, it is crazy. I'm like, when do you have time for you? He's like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, that's, uh, you gotta, you know, strike while the iron is hot, you know? Yeah, yeah sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's, it's coming in now. Gotta go with it. Gotta go with that, baby. <laughs> that makes me wonder, Dorothy. When do you have time for yourself? Yeah, you're always busy. Oh, it's yeah. Now you have to run the bottom, though. I have so much time for myself. As a, as a person who plays the moms and the teachers, I'm not in super high demand. Um, you know, I'm in, like, all these great shows. I'm in Miraculous Ladybug, but I'm the teacher. So, you know, I kind of have plenty of time for myself. <laughs> I actually do. And I actually kind of like it. Um, don't get me wrong. I like being busy, but I, I'm mm -hmm. not crazy about being super busy. I tend to get like anxiety if I, if I yeah. get super busy and there'll be times that are like that. The roller coaster's like, okay, nothing, nothing, nothing's going on. Oh, everything's happening. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> yeah. So what do you like to do in your free time? I, okay, my husband says that me and my daughter are cats because we like to sit, I'll sit on this couch, she'll, she'll be on this couch, and we'll both be reading our books. That's what we like to do in our spare time. And he'll come out and go, God, what, why so quiet out here? What? <laughs> We're reading. <laughs> <laughs> we, like, we like to have a little peace and quiet. That's that's what we like in our spare time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's also like Shh, don't talk to us we're reading <laughs> don't bother us <laughs> <We're concentrating>. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you're super busy like it's so hard to get that time where you have that like that peace and quiet and it's like when you can get that level of like just serenity it's like oh, just yeah. let me bask in it mm -hmm. for a little bit yeah, that's how I, I feel like every day with this little one. I'm like, yeah, just when she's sleep, I'm like, okay, just. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember when ours was that little. It's, they always say, "Oh, sleep when the baby sleeps," and I took that to heart. <laughs> You're out <Yes>. so much. <laughs> so you just had your daughter while you both were working. <laughs> How did you do that? Like, my gosh. Um, well, it, it uh, being a voice actor was perfect for having a kid because you, you can schedule like any time throughout the day, you know, whenever it's, whenever it fits with like, once she got to be school age, I could take her to school and then go do a job and then come back and pick her up after school. And it was like, mm -hmm. oh, great. The only thing that having a child affected was that I was no longer able to do theater. Um, it was too much. I couldn't, um, couldn't work that out. Uh, it would have been too, too, not financially good. Let's just say mm -hmm. get someone, because when you do theater, 
you're rehearsing every night for like weeks. Mm -hmm. And then the show, when it opens, you're like performing for like, I don't know, four or five nights a week, depending on the theater. So, you know, mm -hmm. if my husband was working at that time, he was working like nights. It would have been impossible. So I just slowly started. I think I did my last show when she was five and that was it. I just like, I, I can't do this. <laughs> no more theater. See ya. <laughs> See her on the steel guitar. Maybe I'll go back to it someday, someday. But, uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. That was it. It was too hard. It was too hard. <laughs> Wow. I yeah. commend you for being able to do multiple things while also raising a child. Yeah. Like wow. we're, <laughs> we are experiencing that and you are doing <laughs> physically strenuous. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh my goodness. No. Yeah. It can be, it's all consuming. Really. If you're going to raise a child, that's like a huge chunk of time of your life that's yeah. happening, you know, when they're not in school or, or, you know, daycare or whatever they're doing. Um, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. But yeah, so it was ideal for voiceover, not ideal for theater. Um, I mean, at first I was a little bit bummed, but as, as time went by, it's like, you know what? I, I can't do it. I'm, I have this other creative outlet. It's, it's fine. It's totally great, you know. Yes, yeah. another creative outlet. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Gotta have that. Yeah, like we're, we're starting to... Well, not starting. We've been like getting into that where it's like, okay, we can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Or it's just time to let that go. That ship sailed. And mm -hmm. like at first, I know for me, there was like a lot of stuff, especially like doing YouTube and podcasting and whatnot. Like I'm trying to stay on top of every single thing. And I just got to a point where I'm like, I'm burning myself out. Yep. I'm mm -hmm. stressing myself out mentally. I can't literally just you know, set her down, run, go record. Okay. Yeah. This happened. Da, 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 da. I get to it when I get to it. And yeah. you know, it, it does impact a lot of opportunities, but I'm like, I'm grateful for the companies that, that are understanding because yeah. it's like, she comes first and, yeah. and that's just how that is. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it, it, I, I know people will tell, like, have said to us, they're like, oh, you know, I could never have a kid because I had to give up too much. I'm like, you know, it's not for everybody, but if you it's do not for everybody, but, oh my god but the life experience i can't even imagine yeah. not having a kid now can't can't imagine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i love that we can talk about this from a creator's point of view because i don't really hear about this much as like someone who's an industry and a parent at the same time like yeah you hear like yeah i'm doing great i'm a great parent my children are great but we don't really hear kind of like the journey yeah. like what we had to do like yeah. what we had to prioritize yeah. the anxiety as mikhail has been talking about the stress well every yeah. every content creator we talk to every streamer and youtuber they're like yeah i don't want a kid i'm making too much money i'm doing too much to, to ever settle down and have a kid like kids are annoying and it's like wow. that's why i stopped yeah that's why i stopped going to events i went to la for mm -hmm. the final fantasy 16 event and Getting to meet a lot of the creators there was very eye-opening because it's like, it's a bubble. And wow. I'm like, I realize that I'm not in that bubble and I'm mm -hmm. not in that mentality. Like, success is great, but it shouldn't be to the point where who you are as a person is just that. It's just that, right. And yeah. yeah, you know, like, and, and so many people, they, they lose sight of, like, who they are as an individual versus who they are online. And it's like, that blurred line can be dangerous. And I... You know, I got back and I told her, I'm like, yeah, I think I'm good on that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I, I think I'm good. Like, I I enjoyed my trip to L.A., but like, uh, you know, the the creator aspect and the 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 me, 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 me thing. I'm like, that's just not me as a person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, I hear you. It's yeah. Priorities um, change throughout your life. Yeah. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like hearing how I like hearing both your guys' stories where even though you have a child, it didn't deter you. Yeah. Like, Mikhail has been hearing all these people say, I don't want children because this and that. He's like, that is not going to change the way I am, the way I think. <laughs> you think the way you think. I will respect that. Well, <laughs> I had a time <laughs> limit. I had people telling me, like, when we, when 
uh, when she you're pregnant with her, and then when she was born, you're like, oh, you're gonna fail as a YouTuber and a creator within three months. You're gonna drop it. I'm wow, still thanks. here. Thirty thousand plus. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> they didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so. Since you were able to concentrate on voice acting, do you remember what roles you were doing after that? Like when you made that decision? Or was it because you had so many jobs, so many roles, like it was just a blur? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of, I, don't, I don't know. It kind of was a blur. Well, here's this. I was, okay. I was doing a show in Milwaukee at Milwaukee Rep. I was playing Annette Funicello in Beach Blanket Bash. And um, I was there for three months. It was a three month run. And I found out while I was there that I was pregnant. And um, no. yeah. So, oh, so um, luckily, you know, I didn't really show until after I, after the first three months when I came back and I started whatever. But, um, without even knowing I was pregnant, the fact that I was out of town, I, things were changing already as far as like getting rid of theater in my life because I was working on a couple of shows and um, mm -hmm. they, they, they like, they come in like groups. Well, you'll do like episodes one through 20 or whatever. Then there'll be a long break before you get, you know, 21 to 30 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently while I was in Milwaukee, the next batch came in. And so I had to fly to LA from Milwaukee after the Sunday show and mm -hmm. do uh, both the shows that I was on, on Monday. I had to schedule it on Monday and then fly back on Tuesday. So I'd be there for the Tuesday night show because we did Tuesday through Sunday. Um, and it was too much. It was too much. And I just like, that's, that, that's when the prioritizing before I even knew I was pregnant, before we even had a kid, I was like, what do I want to do more? Do I want to, you know, continue theater or do I want to keep doing voiceover? Because they're not, they're not going to work out very well if I'm gone for three months doing a show somewhere. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah, that kind of made my decision because it was, it was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing still. <laughs> and then what was the transition like from going from doing shows in person to going to a booth? Because I've heard that sometimes you have to channel your energy. If you're someone who moves around a lot or if you're someone who projects a lot, you kind of have to modify yourself because there's like a mic right in front of you. Also in a small little space sometimes. Right. <laughs> yeah. no. Well, I mean, I was not recording from home back then everything was in studio so you know mm -hmm. they would set you up with the mic they would get everything ready or whatever and you know if there was like yelling that had to be done they would adjust on their end before you recorded a take like that it was i didn't mm -hmm. find it to be like a huge transition i you know you're an actor now you're just acting in this different space but if i found it to be the same <laughs> I, I i do move around depending on the character it's it's so funny there are some characters that I, do, I teachers, I guess, where I find that I, I, I'm holding my hands like this in front of me when I do the teacher <laughs> and, I, and crazy stuff. And if I like I did a boy the other day who was playing sports in I can't say what it was, but it was and uh, and I found myself putting my hands were in fists when I was doing the boy's voice. I had to, you know, go like that. So you do you move around, you find a way to channel that energy into what you're doing. But I didn't find it to be a super huge transition is you know it was acting to me acting is acting so it was it was cool <laughs> nice okay. Okay. do you know which characters required you to use a lot of energy and what was it like um you know what it's interesting you say that i don't find that characters uh who need a lot of energy are difficult they're actually mm -hmm. um easier to me than there are very specific examples of the opposite of that. Um, I, I played Miyu in Vampire Princess Miyu a billion years mm -hmm. ago. And um, the director, K 
kept directing me smaller and smaller and smaller. Her her idea was that she's a vampire, so she's dead. So so she didn't want the character to have a lot of, you know, color going on. So I it was really, really hard for me to bring the, the performance down that far. She goes, that was a great take. Let's bring it down some more. And I was just like, oh my God, am, am I even doing anything now? It was really, really <laughs> tough. Um, or, or characters like Mercedes in Fire Emblem. She has a lot of air in her voice. So when yeah. the voice has a lot of air in it, it's expending all the air you have in you. So I would use up my air quicker than if I'm doing a normal voice person. You know, I would I would lose all my air after like three lines instead of like seven. You know what I mean? Something mm -hmm. like that. So that so that was more difficult than doing a character who's got a lot of energy and blah blah blah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the audience of appreciate those characters more knowing how much effort uh, <laughs> you've put into being those characters and making their voice perfect <laughs> <laughs> well we want to make them perfect for the fans baby yeah <laughs> as much as as much as possible in fact my goal um you know if i'm having a bad day or whatever and i i know i'm gonna go to work sometimes i'm just tired and but then i just go in there and i go okay you know what the best job I can on each line, one line at a time. Do the best job I can on this line. Great. Let's do the next one. You know, and then I find that that brings me up. It actually mm -hmm. improves my mood if I'm having a bad day. <laughs> cool. so, so I know, like, um, so I watch a lot of, I, I my personal preference when I watch uh, anime or I play video games is to play the, the stuff I grew up with in the the nineties and the you know, early two thousands, mm -hmm. and like when I hear like I I love I love voice acting as a whole, but I for me like I can hear a distinct difference between listening to voice acting from then, where it's like you guys did theater, you know, you were yeah. full on acting versus a lot of modern voice acting, where it's like okay, the the training is to be a voice actor, like it's. I've talked to most of my friends that are like, oh, I can't hear a difference. And I'm like, I don't know why I can. Like, it's like, it's so distinct. Like, yeah. case in point, my favorite anime, Roy Kenshin. I love the new one. It's cool. <laughs> I have such an attachment to the original. Like, hearing you, you know, hearing Richard Epcar, Richard Ken Kensino. Oh, I love it. Like, it's just... I, such dream. I I still want to have him on the show one day. I have no idea how to contact him, but like it's when I'm listening to the delivery of the lines from you guys, I can tell like you're in the character, mm -hmm. you bring the character to life. Yeah. Whereas like a lot of stuff I hear now, it's great, but I'm like, it, it's not the same. I don't know yeah. if that makes sense. No, no, it makes you know? makes perfect sense because we. We were coming, we were all coming from a different place back then. We were, yeah. I think 90% of us were coming from theater uh, back then. And even the directors were coming from a mindset of that when we were creating all those early shows. And it's, you know, it's evolved a lot over the years, you know? So yeah, you've got people now who, uh, I mean, a lot of them do come from theater still, but a lot of them don't. They come from mm -hmm. voice acting class and, and learning it that way. And, um, and, you know, learning that craft, which is great. But the style is, like you say, it's different. The style is, has yeah. changed. And even the style of directing has often changed, too. So not that that's a good or a bad thing. But, but yeah, it, I have noticed, too, that it's changed. But, uh, but, you know, there's so many great people out there doing great work. Yeah. It's, you know, whatever the style is. But, but yeah, Richard Cancino, man. He, oh, I love that guy. <laughs> so so iconic. Uh -huh. I definitely I definitely miss you as Kaoru and as Meryl because I love the new voice acting for the new shows, but it's just like I, I just have that nostalgia. I'm like, oh, yeah. you are Kaoru, you are Meryl. Like it's just it's Yay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't I can't believe it's been like 25 years or something, and I finally got a Funko Pop of Meryl. I know. Oh my god, really? Okay, sure. 
<laughs> I'll take it after all those years. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> Nice. Now, when you got that Funko Pop, was it given to you or were you looking for it? <laughs> uh, I was given one and now, you know, now people have me sign them. So that's, I've never had a Funko Pop right before. Door. Yeah, I know. Tom had, used to have a um, an Agumon, which I hear they're going to re-release, but it's been uh, vaulted for like, I don't know how many years now. So, so we can't even buy one uh, if unless mm -hmm. we want to spend like you know sixty dollars just to buy his i'll go on talk about um but uh, people come up with them and they want him to sign them and we're like oh my god where did you find this and like oh i've had this for years and you know finally um, i'm like yeah that's kind of the only way to get him to sign one is if you've had it for years <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah no i'm so i'm thrilled to have a funko pop finally for the first time ever <laughs> <laughs> God. So what kind of things do people have you sign while you're at these conventions? Like I, I was not expecting a Funko Pop. Like oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, though I I bought some Merrells because they had them at Hot Topic for a while. So I bought some Merrells that I take with me if anybody wants to, you know, have a signed Merrell or they'll bring it. Or, you know, they'll they'll buy some prints that I have to to sign, but they bring me stuff too. They bring me the the box from um, Fire Emblem Three Houses. They want me to sign or their Fire Emblem book. They'll open to the page with Mercedes and they want me to sign in there. It's like Mercedes is like real. She's for real. And um, and uh, and Naruto posters with Conan. That's really really. That's the thing. Mercedes and Conan and Meryl, I guess, are like are the ones you know that everybody wants me to sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to bring ours to one of our signings. <laughs> we, had, we had Mark Mark sign it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Nice. My goodness. What was your journey as Mercedes? Did you kind of think of the concept for her or was it more like the direction? Because like you said, like she's the real thing. Like what was it like being her? Um, I, I really loved that they cast me as that part because she's like, she's so spiritual. She's different than all the other characters, you know? I mean, not that any of the other ones aren't spiritual, but her whole thing is, you know, about the goddess and, and peacefulness, whenever possible. And she's very, she's like the maternal one, right? Which is goes mm -hmm. right along with my mom's that I always play. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, that was great. I loved that about her. I love that she was... She seemed very different from all the other characters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then were you surprised by how many fans there were of her? Like how many people were asking you to sign their Fire Emblem merchandise? Yeah, I will say that because I'd never experienced that before. I mean, I've done a lot of games over the years and it's never been like that before. That game exploded and I'm just like, yeah. whoa, what is this? <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> it's crazy because like I've been a Fire Emblem fan for like over 20 years. And wow. it's 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 always been like niche. Like people didn't know what that was. But mm -hmm. when three houses came out, everything blew up and everyone's yep. like, Oh, I'm a Fire Emblem fan. I'm like, oh okay <laughs> like, and like all the games like because i've got like all the games i've collected over the last 20 some years and like they shot up in value like they're hundreds of thousands like hundreds of uh, hundreds of dollars thousands of dollars i'm like i bought this for like ten dollars or five dollars at a thrift shop <laughs> like yeah. it just yeah it brought it into the mainstream and you you know you definitely had a very instrumental part and in, making that like so memorable that is one of the best fire emblems in the series in my Yay. opinion as a series bet so yeah. <laughs> oh my god yeah, yeah. i trust you <laughs> <laughs> and then what is it like to have a spouse a partner that's in the same industry as you oh it's I, yeah yeah so like michael and i we kind of work with each other but we also do separate things mm -hmm. like are there times where do you prefer working together or separately? 
Let's start with that. I mean, it doesn't matter. When it comes to voiceover, it doesn't matter. Uh, we have worked on a lot of the same shows, but we don't always. But, you know, like like always, you're not together, really, when you're recording. Mm -hmm. always, you're in there in your booth, and then he goes whenever he can. But I will say that it's really fun because we often get to go to conventions together. Um, he He's not... He's not a fan of, of going by himself to conventions. Um, he'll go with me. We'll go as a couple. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've gone a lot on my own as well, but he's not crazy about doing that. So, um, but it's super fun when we get to go together. So that's that's a that's a real perk. <laughs> get your partner in crime. See? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys get to do something together outside yeah. of your home, outside of kind of kind of outside work. It's it's kind of work. It's kind of not work because. Yeah. You're not always at your booth. You're not always at the panel. You can explore and such. <laughs> it depends. Yeah, it depends too on, on what city you're in. Like we were in um, Windsor, Canada recently um, at a convention. And one night, um, me and Tom and Joshua, Seth and uh, Lisa Ortiz, the four of us went out to dinner. Every Everybody we talked to said, oh, you got to go to this this restaurant. Just a couple down. Yeah, you know, it was some steakhouse called, I don't know what. And so we were tired at the end of the day, but we're also really hungry. So I'm like, okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's go. So we all mm -hmm. took a walk to this restaurant. We had a fabulous dinner. We had a great time together. It was really nice. But sometimes, I guess, especially if I'm at a convention by myself and if I happen to be with voice actors that I don't really know, I might just, you know, mm -hmm. like grab dinner and go up to the hotel room and eat in there and not really explore anything just because I, I, meh. Too tired. <laughs> yeah, I it get you. It depends. Get you. <laughs> it just depends. Sometimes I'm an extrovert. Sometimes I'm an introvert. It depends. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, we we definitely got to get you out here to the conventions. Um, it, it, I think the interesting thing is, like, I've talked to the people for Amazing uh, Honolulu Comic Con. And they're always saying like, yeah, you know, we don't know how to get in touch with this person, this person. And I'm like, I know these people. I can, <laughs> I can connect you. I can give you that, you know, get yeah. you in touch with them. And they're like, yeah, sure. We'll get back to you. And the next thing you know, like, oh, yeah, we can only get this voice actor. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Whatever, yeah, yeah. you know. I figure <laughs> eventually we'll we'll get around to, to Hawaii or I don't know, wherever else. They have to get through all the the hot young people first, you know. Then the, then they'll get to the old fogies who've been around since the nineties. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'll, it'll be a little while, but we'll we'll get around to you. <laughs> okay. I feel like you're all like a big family. That's the impression I get with voice actors. Like no matter what generation you're in, you're all like one unit, and I really like that. Like that camaraderie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say it's, you know, we we had that camaraderie with the, the voice actors that we came up with, mainly because we were the only ones, you know, mm -hmm. in the early days. It's literally there was a, a little tiny pool of us and we did every show. We did everything because there was nobody else. So we mm -hmm. got to be really close you know, just from working with each other over and over again. And, you know, they would have cast parties. I mean, they don't do that as much anymore, I don't think. So, I mean, some do. But we would actually see more of each other, you know, and mm -hmm. being a small group. Now the pool is, as you say, gigantic. But um, but I have gotten to know, you know, some of the some of the new kids. And, uh, mm -hmm. and they're, they're very nice and they're really fun. And, uh, uh, you know, it is it is a family. It is like a big giant never-ending family <laughs> i bet you get a lot of those that look at you like you're iconic like oh my gosh you are dorothy fawn i have been listening to you i have been following you for years i want to be you i bet you get a lot of those though <laughs> well um we get we had a good amount of people both me and tom who uh come up to us especially with like digimon uh, Digi, because Digimon was like it for a certain generation, and they'll come yeah. up and go, "Oh my God, you guys, you were my childhood." We've heard that so many times, 
you know, I'd come home from school and, you know, everything was sucked and I'd come home and I'd put on Digimon and everything was great. You know, I love Digimon and the relationships that they had. And so it's like, wow, we, we were just doing a job. We had no idea it was going to be this huge positive influence to an entire generation of people, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and okay, this is, uh, I can I can relate to this because if I met someone who I was like totally starstruck by, I would probably react the same way. But once in a while, somebody will will come up and will like do the voice of the person that that they that they like, and they'll like cry immediately. They'll like burst into tears. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's like oh my god, here let me give you a hug. It's okay. They're like oh my god, I can't believe. So it's like wow. Uh, that's quite an effect to have on a person. Um, you know, once you get over the initial shock of that happening, you realize, you know what? Yeah, no, I see where they're coming from. Because if I'm at Paul McCartney, I'd probably burst into tears. <laughs> like, is, is Agumon on Digimon your Paul McCartney? It may be. He may have affected you so much growing up that that's your reaction. I can't tell you how many times that's happened to Tom. He'll do the Agumon voice oh, and wow. people will, will just, just, it, it was, it was it for them. That was it. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm literally picturing that your guys' voices as those characters planted a seed and it just flowered. It like just grew. You guys created this garden of people who just have such wonderful memories and such a positive effect on them and it just carried throughout their lives like yeah. something oh yeah mind blown <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's 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 great and you you know like i said you're you're just an actor and you're doing a job i'm just so amazed and thrilled that something that we did had such a, a positive effect on people and even to like to this day, through all the iterations of, of Digimon that we've worked on and the Adventure Try movies that came out recently, I'm like, oh my gosh, are we back? We're back in Digimon again. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> that was great. I don't know if you saw those, but they they were the evolution of Digimon. It was, it yeah. was something. Um, uh, when we watched the last evolution, Kazuna, I'm like, I need the tissues. I need the tissues. <laughs> so so being completely respectful of your time and, and thanking you for coming on the show is there any final questions you have for dorothy or yes what what are roles you're going to be on next that you can talk about like what can we look forward to in the future with you um blah, blah, blah. well Okay, I can say this. I don't know if you guys heard that they re-recorded Digimon the movie. Did you hear about that? I did, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, yeah, we did Digimon the movie in like 2000, I think it was. And uh, and it's iconic. That's the movie in which Ty's mom is a horrible cook. And it's, <laughs> I find it to be so hilarious. But it, it was originally like, I think, three different Digimon movies from Japan. And they yeah. took most of one and they cut out stuff. And it was like a Frankenstein thing. So, mm -hmm. so now they're, they're doing the whole thing. All the cut parts are back in and they redid the script. So it's more like the Japanese. So, so sadly, my character is not as bad a cook. Um, but they got <laughs> all, all the original voice actors that are still around. So I appreciated that they didn't recast everything and they got, you know, all of us back to do the, you know, re-record version, the full version, the, yeah, uncut Digimon uncut. <laughs> so, so that was, that was really fun. You know, that's, I don't know if it's come out yet, but it's been announced. So I can, I can say that other things I can't, I can't, can't talk about nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, really. <Yeah. laughs> So I, I know I do have one final question for you. Um, okay. With the the voice acting industry, like I know in Japan, typically when a voice actor gets a role, they stay with that role, like forever. You know, mm -hmm. um, 
Why do you feel that it's different here in the West? Like they're constant recasting and and such. Um. Well, for me, that's it's been like a new thing. Um. Mm -hmm. The 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 reboot and recast thing that's been going on now. Um. I don't know. It's it's kind of a thing. Like like taking a an animated Disney movie and making it live action. You know. Yeah. Let's, let's take this thing that we love and make it the same but different. That's yeah. it's like it's like popular to do that now. Um, uh, once in a while through the years, someone would get recast for whatever reason. I don't know why, but it, it didn't seem like it was uh, as prevalent as it is now. Um, mm. It's just a thing. And that's fine. I mean, because, uh, you know, there are new actors There's a whole pool of new actors. So let's, you know, get give it to them. Let them give it a shot. Let them do it. You know, mm -hmm. you did it a hundred years ago. Now let them do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, of course I would love to go back and do that part again and do this part again, but you know, I have no say in that. I was lucky to do Digimon for 25 years in every, everyone, Tamers and whatever, all of them. I was, I was somebody in all of them. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> many, okay. many Mons. Okay. Okay. Is, <laughs> Is there anything you want to leave the audience with before we go? Uh, only that uh, I would like to quote Ringo Starr and just say to everyone, peace and love. Or as Vash would say, love and peace. Love and peace. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <Whoa! laughs> oh, my God. oh, my God. Yeah. Well, uh, Dorothy is such a joy to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming on this show that we're doing together. And I just want to thank you again for taking time out because I, I don't know if you know this, you were literally the first voice actor I've ever interviewed Get in out. my career as a I podcast. Didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. It was you, then it was Griffin, and then it was Richard Epcar. And I'm like, I'm yeah. set for life. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get Richard Epcar, baby, you have made it. Yes. <laughs> uh, I definitely want to thank you because it's uh, for giving me the opportunity, you know, all those years ago to start my podcasting career and for giving us the opportunity to have you on this show that we're doing together. And it's just, it's always a blast. We'd love to have you on again. Um, definitely doing everything on our end to get you out here to conventions. Come on, amazing. Yeah. Just yes, yeah, amazing com Hawaii Comic Con. Come on, hey, come on, I seriously. I mean, there's uh, there's got to be another convention there. You know, if if this Comic Con doesn't want us, bam, move on. There's another one. Let's go yes. there. I mean, you're in demand. So yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm still hot. I'm still in demand. <laughs> Yeah. So, so with that being said, people, thank you all for listening to this episode when it goes up uh, or watching video format, either on YouTube or on Spotify. Uh, you can catch podcasts across worlds on every podcasting outlet, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts and Music. I think it's on, I don't know, they're being weird. Google too. It's, it's no longer <laughs> Google Podcasts. It's now Google something i don't know youtube music it, it keeps changing i can't keep up with wow it. you're Anyways, everywhere yeah it's it literally where you want to go you'll find it <laughs> yeah so uh thank you guys for listening and it, this is you do the outro that's your thing you, you, come on. You, you got it so thank you all for listening to podcasts across the world keep reading manga keep watching anime and keep listening to podcasts across worlds Woohoo! <laughs> listening to podcasts across worlds. This is a passion project that was created by Lehua Superfina and is co-hosted by myself, Mikhail Casnova. If you enjoyed this episode and any of the topics that we talk about or any of the guests and voice actors and various people we have on the show, then make sure you do us a solid by if you're watching it on YouTube, which is on youtube.com slash Lehua Superfina, 
then make sure you like the video, share it around with someone you think would enjoy it, as well as leave a comment on what you think could be improved or what you liked, what you didn't like, and all that in between. If you're listening to the show on any of the major podcasting outlets, such as Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or any of the others, then make sure you leave a rating, leave a comment, interact with the polls that we put out, and so much more. If you want to support the show, we do have Patreon, as well as many other methods for supporting. And with that being said, we're signing out. We hope you enjoyed this, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Keep listening, keep watching, and keep enjoying podcasts across worlds. We'll see you around.